Okay, in this video, we're going to see a demonstration on how we can perform uh, manual SQL injection attacks on a vulnerable web application. So I'm going to use this uh, application by name, Dam Vulnerable Web Application. And this is available for free on the internet. And uh, you can go and download the source from GitHub. You can install this on your systems. And this is a very vulnerable web application. And I'm going to demonstrate how we can perform SQL injection attacks on this application manually. So let me enter the system. And uh, let me go to this one particular form. We are going to try and attack this form. As an hacker, I need more information than what I should be knowing. For that, uh, say, for instance, uh, this form gives us information about an user using the user ID. If we enter user ID 1, first name and surname is displayed. Well, that is what uh, this application is was designed to perform. So it's fine. But as an hacker, I need more information. For instance, I want to know the username and password also for an user. So is it possible for me to manipulate the SQL queries and get such information from the database? So how can we know whether a web application is uh, vulnerable to SQL injections? We can just go and give an apostrophe and then press submit. So when you're going to get a SQL syntax error like this, it it means that the data from the field is given to a SQL query without any validation. So this gives an information to the hacker that he can manipulate the input data and get data from the databases. So we have found that this application is vulnerable because we're getting a SQL error directly. So we can go and give a one and an apostrophe and submit. A SQL error is a very clear indication that this form is injectable. We know that this form is injectable, so we can go and uh, perform further inputs. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to append a simple AND condition, 1 equals 1, and then end it with an hash. So just appending an AND condition, here I'm giving 1 equals 1, it means true. You can have 2 equals 2 or 3 equals 3, it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to check whether having an AND condition has any impact on the input. Let me go and submit it. OK, there is no change to the output. The appending, appending an AND condition to the input doesn't affect the output. So now I'm going to try and append a SQL queries to my input and try to retrieve the database and users information. So let's go and give an input. So it's one apostrophe and one equals one. And then I'll go with the union. I hope you all know what a union does in SQL. So we'll give a SQL query here, select database. I want to view the databases behind this application. I also want to know the user accounts for this database. I'll end the query with an hash and then submit. So here I'm trying to get the database info and the user account information for the database which as a normal user, I should not be getting. When I click on submit, you can see here, it very well fetches me the database name as DVWA and the user account name is root hat localhost. So this is how I can manipulate the query, SQL queries from the front end application and get vulnerable information from the application. So I can go and get the tables inside my database. I can do that. Let me show you a demo of that. It's one apostrophe and one equals one. We'll do a union. We'll do select the first uh, parameter item will be null. And then we'll select the table name from information underscore schema. So in MySQL, information underscore schema holds the data about all the tables so it's information underscore schema dot tables and then we'll give an hash so i'm just fetching all the table names from the database so let's go and click submit okay so from the information underscore schema in mysql it's just giving me all the tables inside my database so you can see here 
it's fetching me the list of all the tables in my MySQL database that's running this application. And uh, and we can very well see here there is an users table. So this data tells me that there is an users table inside my DBWA database. And as an hacker, I'll be interested in the users table to get the username and password of my users. So what will be the next query I'm going to run is I'm going to try and fetch the username and password from the database. So I'll again go and give this uh, input one apostrophe and one equals one. Now I'll do a union. I know which is the table. So what I will do is I'll just select user comma password from the table users hash because anyone can guess the users table mostly will have the username and password for an user so when i go and press submit yeah so you see here the hashed password is being retrieved directly on the form so i'm able to get for every user what is this password directly from the form so this kind of an attack is called a SQL injection attack because I can retrieve the username, password or any critical information that I should not be getting directly from the database by manipulating the SQL queries and uh, getting all the vulnerable information. So I can go and perform some kind of attacks to get the original password from the hashed values. So this is how manually SQL injection attacks are performed on any application.